Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and we're going to come at you today with hopefully what will be a fairly short and concise video on designing clock faces. Now we're not going to do any fancy designing of clocks, we're going to design just the basic format of the clock, allowing you to go in and create your own creations. I'll have a link in the comments below to the uh, clock mechanisms that I buy uh, that are come with all the accessories you need except for the battery you get your own batteries uh, to build some really nice and unique clocks uh, but first thing you gotta have is uh, a nice clock face and you d I don't like especially if there's a product that I'm going to be selling I like to present it truly as my own when I can uh, I don't like to use uh, copy and trace uh, or buying other people's images any more than I have to. I, I, I take great pride and joy in designing unique pieces. So a clock face is not that unique because it, it's got to be standard, right? Well, we're going to go in here and create a standard clock face that then you can go in and customize and make your own. All right, so let's jump into Lightburn. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to draw a circle. We're going to hit our ellipse tool over there, hold our shift button, and draw out a perfect circle. Select tool, and I'm going to put it on toolpath 2. I like that lighter blue. And now with that selected, I'm not even going to worry about the height, width, and any of that stuff at this point. None of that is relevant. With that circle selected, I'm going to select our offset tool. We're going to do an inward and outward offset, so both selected. Of course, the corner style is round because circles ain't got no corners. And we do not want to delete our original objects. We want to keep our original objects, so turn that off. And we want to give it a uh, an eighth of an inch uh, offset in either direction. So that's going to be a quarter inch wide. All right, done. All right, so now we have three toolpaths. Uh, and I need to now put in my text, my, my, my numbers. So I select my text field, type in a 12, select tool, I'm going to put it on engraved path so I can see it easier. Now with that selected, I'm just going to hold down shift and select the tool paths, tell it to align center, and now that it's centered, I can actually take her up a little bit, uh, get her a little closer to the outside there's looking pretty good and now I need to look and see about the font size how does that look uh, let's do this get her centered up for me all right um, that actually don't look too bad so we're gonna leave that like it is select it I'm gonna hold shift and select our toolpath and you notice I'm not putting in values for any of this because this is all going to be scalable. So right now it's all a matter of does that 12 look good in relation to the size of the circles and toolpaths that are drawn. I think that's all right. So hold, select the 12, hold shift, and select the toolpaths. Come down to your circular array tool. Select it. We need how many copies? How many hours on the face clock? Not 60. Bingo, there's 12. Now that just doesn't look right either, does it? No, it doesn't. Because when you're doing your circular array, you're going to make sure all your values are right. Where are we going to start? We're starting at zero degrees, which is on clock, 12 o'clock. We're going to end at 360 degrees, which is where? Back at 12 o'clock. We need a step of 30. Now how do I know that? Because 12 o'clock straight up and down, 3 o'clock's over here, uh, I guess on your camera it might be three or nine. I can't tell what what's reversed, but anyway, that's ninety degrees. And you had three numbers to get one, two, three to get to ninety. So three divided by ninety is thirty degrees. Every number on the clock face is thirty degrees increment apart. So thirty is our step. And uh, this is personal preference. Some people like to have those numbers go around with the clock face. I don't like to stamp on my head to see that it's seven. You don't have to because you know that's where seven o'clock at but i elect not to rotate my object copies i keep those oriented just like that so by unchecking the rotate object proper copies it keeps everything like i would prefer to see it so zero 360 30 step interval and 
do not rotate object copies if you want to have those all oriented like so okay now the numbers are all wrong but they are in the exact position they should be and since there's only 12 numbers and we only have to partially edit some of them I'm going to elect not to do anything fancy I, I do I have used uh, uh, variable text to do this automatically but this is just too easy too quick so select your text tool again come back over and we're going to backspace delete that two we're going to come in the middle backspace delete that one go to the end and make it a three and then come down here and make it a four five six seven eight nine now here we don't need to get rid of the one so just zero and one and that quick we have the beginnings of a clock face now we want to uh, go back to our select tool and what I want to do uh, first is I'm going to zoom out I'm going to select everything and group this together because my uh, orientation for the numbers are exactly where they need to be and I don't want them to get accidentally bumped or misaligned so I'm grouping those together so they're locked together so now if I inadvertently drag anything off it's all moving intact now I need to put my uh, hash marks my little ticks for my hours and my minutes so to do that I'm going to make sure nothing's selected now I'm going to select the pencil I'm going to draw a line from top dead center and just draw a line done okay now select that come to offset and we're going to do another inward and outward I like the round uh, that's way too big of course we're going to do point uh, point oh four no nah no it's just, that's even bigger point oh one four uh, this is just for demonstration purposes we'll go with that all right now uh, the difference here if uh, outward and that that's actually the same but on the corner style how that's a rounded uh, oval or pill shape you can do corners and just get a flat box all the way around I like the pill shape so I'm going back to round and say and uh, now here also we did a straight line and then we did an offset of that line uh, I want to get rid of that line so here we want to engage or in uh, select delete original objects because if you don't when you go to engrave this you're going to engrave that little peel and then go back and engrave that line that's still there so get rid of the original objects so done it's okay now with that done with that still selected i'm going to shift hold and drag and select our toolpaths again come over here to our circular array and this is going to be our hour marks so there are 12 hours so that's right we're going to start at zero we're going to end at 360 our step needs to be what 30 not 45 and here you notice how all of the those are straight up and down this is where I do want them to rotate so I will select rotate object copies and now that puts our ticks with our hour marks so okay done now we need to put in our uh, our minutes and seconds all right starting to look a little like a clock all right so to put in our, our minutes and our seconds I'm actually going to turn this layer off I don't want to see it I'm going to come back to my line tool and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw a line but this time up you know what I need to change a different layer all right so make sure I don't have nothing yep so it's got to go that's in the way delete I messed up by not having a different layer selected all right make sure that's all that's there that's good all right now turn that off there's nothing selected select layer one 
pencil tool and I'm going to draw this time only half of it select it doing an offset now it, it automatically defaults to the last offset you just did and in this case I want to do half of that offset so instead of just and which that's easy it's 0.04 you should okay half 0.02 but what if it wasn't that easy instead of having to get out calculator you can enter your mathematical equations in these fields that ask for distances and measurements and all that so all you have to do is put in the symbol for divide and then two divide by two and that automatically made that smaller now we'll go ahead and put her on a field line and I'm going to hold my shift select the toolpath zoom out so we can see what we're doing when it when it happens and select your circular array again now this time we do need how many not 12 but we need 60 all right and so uh, there are uh, 60 seconds uh, 10 seconds uh, 10 degrees uh, I think that's right. I think it's a step of six. I, uh, we'll see in a minute if it's not right. But zero, 360, I think step of six is correct. 60 copies. We do want to rotate. That was already defaulted because of the last time. So, okay. Now turn on that uh, black layer and we'll know if those are correctly aligned. And there they are. Because you see it's everything is directly centered. Now that's a problem because we do not want those on top of each other. And eliminating overlapping lines in this case doesn't work because those aren't lines. Those are two different distinct shapes. So you can get rid of those a couple of ways. You can just select the blue object there and hit delete and go all the way around doing the same thing. Or you can, I didn't mean to select that. I'm, there we go. Uh, or you can select it like that and hit your weld button and now that's one piece so it's just a matter there's a bunch and that's only to show you there are lots of ways to accomplish the same thing there's no right way or wrong way there might be better ways but you can get there several different ways uh, so go around I'm, I'm just selecting them and deleting those and if you grab the wrong thing and delete the wrong thing, that's what that undo button is up here. So don't worry. If you move too fast to hit the wrong thing, as long as you catch it, you can undo it. All right. So that quick, we have a clock face. Now, I want to put all of these blue ticks on the same engraved layer. And to do that, I simply select one of them, go to my edit tool, come all the way down toward uh, two thirds down, Select all shapes in current layer. Select, and now I tell it to go to layer one. All of these are now on the same, and I'm gonna turn off my toolpath. We'll bring that to center. And there you have a clock face. Now, this is a scalable image. As long as you kept everything locked together whenever you were creating it and then scaled it, then everything's going to be in it and maintained in its correct position. Select all of it, lock it all together, group it. Now, the clock face mechanism you purchase, so whether you buy the one that I've got selected down there in my Amazon, uh, which I really like, it's American made, it's good quality. Uh, it's not the cheapest one, but I feel like it's one of the better quality ones. Uh, not not as flimsy and and I, I prefer being that I'm here in the US I prefer to buy American made if you're in Australia I've got some uh, UK and Ireland's watching if you can buy local buy local and I, I don't know anywhere here local to me physically that I can go and pick up a good quality American made clock mechanism but I can get it on Amazon uh, so, I, same thing, if you don't want to buy the American Made, if you're in, in, in Ireland and you can find a really good Irish, or hey, if you're in Switzerland and you want a really good Swiss clockwork, I bet you you can find those there, no problem. Uh, 
but the one listed below is really good quality, made in America. But in, in the description, it will tell you the shaft size, and I, I think it's a quarter inch. It's right now that's not as relevant as what I'm about to tell you. You do need to know your clock shaft mechanism size, but you don't want to put it in here now. This design is a scalable image that you can uh, hold your control button and scale this out to any size that you want. Uh, and then once you've got your set diameter that you want to make your clock size, then you go in and, and let's say that was a quarter inch hole. Hold your shift key, draw out a, a circle. We're going to tell it it needs to be a quarter inch and it needs to be on a cut path. And now we need to put it in the center of our clock face. So now that you've got it to the right size, now you put in your hole. Because if you put that in there at a quarter inch and then you go scale it around, when you go to cut it out, you're going to have a three inch hole because you, you didn't pay attention and you end up cutting out way too big a hole. So do that last and only after you've got everything scaled to size. And now let's take a look at our preview. Turn our traversal moves on. And I want you to look down here uh, at, and actually, let's, first let's look at the number of passes for everything. All right, that's just one pass. And I've got it on a line, a, a, a cross hatch in a line after field. So when we look at this preview of a clock this size, and what size is that clock? It's not abnormally large. If we look, it's only a, about 11 and a half inch diameter clock face. But we look at the preview, that's a five hour engrave. Man, you ain't gonna, t that's, that's a lot of time. And that's not counting any artwork you're gonna do to this. It's another tip on how to save time. Look at your previews. Anytime you see blood all over your screen, all that red, that is wasted energy, wasted movements. Those are the traversal moves. That's when the laser is just moving from A to B and not doing anything but movement. And all that's wasted movement. So how can we make this better than a five hour burn? Well, this is all one layer except for the cut layer. We open up that layer and look at it. Like I said, it's cross hatch with a line after fill. Uh, and I, on the wood I'd be using, these are about the right settings. I would use 60 millimeters a second and 80% power on a cross hatch. But fill all shapes at once, fill groups together, or fill shapes individually. Well, let's look at fill groups together. Because if you remember, I did the clock face, group that, and then we did the hatch, hash mark. So let's see what that five hour turns into. Huh? That didn't change much of nothing. So let's go back and fill shapes individually. And now we go from five hours to an hour and 24 minutes. So whether you're doing a clock face or any burn at all, you want to do, before you send your job, you want to do a preview. Uh, make sure that you're not just blood red all over your screen because that is just wasted time, wasted energy. Preview wise. An hour and a half versus five hours that is a no-brainer so uh, I hope that you learned a little something from that take something of value away from this uh, I'm building up a, a library of videos to put out on patreon that takes what we just did here and goes a lot more in-depth on doing design work uh, layouts different things adding artwork uh, actually doing the complete builds on projects uh, but I feel like for YouTube purposes, what we've just done is enough and probably could have stopped about three minutes ago. Uh, but uh, an idea of what I will be doing, uh, something to just make this even stand out even more. Real quick, uh, if we just hold, uh, just select one and two. Oh, got to Come on. Oh, everything's grouped. That's why. So ungroup everything. And now I'm going to, I don't want to do all of that. So we're just going to do one, two, four, 11, 10, eight, seven, and five. All right, you can see, and this is a good example of using those mathematical equations. 
because this was scaled up, the view, the font size is some oddball 75.19. Well, I want to do 75% of that height on those numbers. So without having to get out a calculator and figure out what 75% of that is, just times 0.75. And now you've got larger, more predominant numbers at 12, 3, 6, and 9. So there's all kinds of techniques and tips and tri tricks to really make clocks unique and, and your own. But there's your basic design and formula for setting up a clock format. Uh, if you know of a better way to do something I just showed you, put it in the comments. Uh, this was trying to make as short and as concise a video as possible for YouTube. Uh, and like I said, watch for the Patreon page. It is coming. It is coming. Uh, I appreciate all the subscribers here on YouTube. I hope you took some uh, value from this. Uh, I, I'll look forward to making another video for you very soon. But until then, this has been Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out.